Needed to be able to be in this position. I got into poker because I was kind of bored at home and started playing online about seven or eight years ago, and then just kind of played more and more over the years. And uh, obviously there's a lot of poker, a lot of card playing that goes on on the flight, so that, that also was a start for me in poker. Well, no, nothing really can ever bring back the competitive nature of playing basketball at the highest level, but poker is certainly a very competitive game, and uh, you know, this opportunity to play against some of the best players in the world and kind of recreate that uh, energy level. I mean, anything you do, you want to play against the best and beat the best, just as in basketball, going against the best players in the world. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the competition. I know those guys are, are great players out there, and this is what they do for a living. Fortunately, I don't, so we'll see how it goes. Bobby Sura has guarded Michael Jordan, so he's used to playing against the best. Also, he's a white guy that played in the NBA for 11 seasons, so he's used to being an underdog as well. More specifically, a guard, and right now, guarding his chips for dear life. <laughs> Action on Daniel. Folds. I've been fine winning or losing the bet, but now, but now I'm upset because now I don't want to bet. Now I just can't bet either way, I feel. Seaver and Viffer betting on whether or not Viffer had Sura beat on the last hand. At 3-1 to one either way. If you lay three to one, you could bet either oh, side. I thought I was getting three to one. How could you get three to one? Give me three to one. Let me have three to one, and I'll pick the side. Seavers raised, and Viffer folds. Really? Cannon calls. Cannon says Jack Ten suited as his favorite hand, but I guess that's close enough. And they'll be heads up to the flop. Eight seven five rainbow. Check. Cannon checks. Both the flop gut shots. Seavers ahead, and he's got the lead. Two yellows, two blacks. Scott makes it 2,200. Two yellows, two blacks it is. Excellent. You can't do it any other way. It has to be that way or it's invalid. Cannon calls. This isn't the first out of position float we've seen from the cannon. Jack of clubs on the turn. Cannon makes a pair. Seaver double gutted. Check. Cannon checks. Zero chips. Also known as checking. Deuce of diamonds on the river. Good spot for a value bet. Three yellows. Three blacks. Right now, Seaver's got the cannon talking all weird like him. <laughs> cannon bets 3,300. I'm in a Tony G spot right here. I'm going to call the moose from the bluff. Joey's in a Tony G spot. That's a myth. I'm guessing Seaver probably can't call with ace high. No one's really been able to look up the cannon, though, and I think that's getting to them. Seaver's not going to be a hero. He lays it down, and the cannon wins another pot, this one worth over $11,000. Your money won without showdown percentage has to be pretty good. I wonder what that is. Because you, yeah, no one ever calls, and you just bet, and they always just fold. Daniel's got a big mouth, but he ain't kidding. Gonzo has already won nearly eighty thousand dollars in pots without showing down his cards, and hasn't backed down to the pros one iota. In fact, the loose cannon seems to be taking it to them instead, post flop at least. The pros are trying to push the cannon off hands, but Gonzo's not folding the raises pre-flop, and he's hanging around like a deer tick post-flop. Action's on Tony G. In general, he's played a lot. Two jacks, raises to 1,300. 13. Hold on a minute. Viffer, one jack, folds. Tony's got an actual hand for once. Cannon, seven ten of spades. Wants to play it, but folds. Sura folds. So is that 13 there? 13. Negrano. Rags, he's out. Still no one's going to play. Yeah, I'm going to play. King eight of clubs, he's going to play. And he calls. Friendly. It never actually seems friendly. People say that, and then it never actually ends up friendly. Seaver and Tony to the flop. Eight, ace, nine, all diamonds. Seaver checks bottom pair. Tony quickly checks behind. Jack of hearts on the turn. Tony's hand improves to a set. Seaver checks. Tony betting out 2,000. Good time for a bet. Scott calls. What do you got there? Uh, bottom pair. I got, I got, yeah, exactly. River, the four of hearts. That looks like you. Seaver checks. Tony bets 6,000. Seaver folds. Turn to set. Not a huge pot, but a tough board to get value on. And I had, I had, I had a flush draw. Jacks. No, I had a flush draw. I had, I had two jacks. One red, one, one black. That's the truth. Right now, Seaver can't handle the truth as he continues to spread chips around the table. See if he can get them back when the big game returns after this. Welcome back to the big game where the loose cannon is currently up over 40 grand and in the lounge with Amanda Leatherman. 
Gonzo, you were doing well out there. I, that, was, that was my game plan. I, you know, I'm excited and you know got a lot, you know, a lot more poker to play, but I'm keeping a level head and moving forward. We're nearly a third of the way through. Describe to me how you're feeling right now. I'm, I'm feeling good. It actually feels like you know a home game. You know, the guys, you know, the conversations the same. You know, um, the actions the same. The, the, the characters, the gameplay, everything is. I'm very familiar with this environment, so. Um, you know, I'm just excited and, and I want to keep doing well. Well, it's a pretty big home game. Good luck out there, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gonzo is well on his way as he's hoping to secure a profit that'll hold up and be good enough to claim this trophy and that NAPT passport as this season's loose cannon champion. Season one winner, Bobby the Bus Ferdinand, took home over 181 grand in addition to the passport, but he did not get married in the Bahamas as he excitedly vowed on last season's finale. Did you just go over there and tell her you've been robbing everybody? <laughs> like, I never have a hand. <laughs> Ace Jack for the cannon. Bet, bet, they keep folding. I'm going to keep doing it. Raises to 12. Sir Negrano out. Are you attacking me? No, sir. Mr. I'm attacking the blind. Definitely feeling like I'm being attacked. Sir, you like being called Sir Tony G? I don't mind, but I don't really like it. <laughs> Tony comes along with 8 4 suited. It's a pretty loose defend, but he is playing against the cannon. King Queen 4. Could be a, a nasty term. Tony's qualified, he checks. Friends, sir. Tony doesn't need a nasty turn, he's hit a nasty flop. Don't bet too much. 15. Cannon bets 1,500. Oh, no, I don't even want to raise that. Right. Now we might end up playing a really big pot. Check raise from Tony to 4,000. And the cannon beats him into the pot. I don't love the insta call. Even offsuit pair outs are dirty to a straight. Ace of hearts on the turn. Cannon hits another turn. 12,000. And Tony's betting 12,000, and again, Cannon beats him into the pot. That's not that's not positive. Did you qualify with that ace? Wow. He did qualify, but Tony's got flush outs. Five of spades on the river. And that's the I missed everything sigh. Well, he does have a pair of fours, has missed his flush. And he checks it. And the Cannon shows him the goods. He has an ace, which gets the money. Yeah, I had a lot of outs. A lot of outs. Another decent sized pot for Gonzo. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did. Turn around. Oh, yeah, draw. Yeah, I was like, what? Oh, never yeah. mind. Yeah. Decent pot, but the pros have finally seen behind the curtain a bit. Yeah, you got the raisin with them. So your your percentage at showdown is also pretty good. <laughs> Batting a thousand. That was the game plan. We gotta keep, keep, we gotta, <laughs> keep moving forward. Looks like the loose cannon's game plan was to steal the playbook. He's out ahead of all the pros, up almost 60 large. Meanwhile, Tony G could use a timeout. Once up over 70,000, he now holds a profit just under 10K. I like where Gonzo is headed as far as the passport is concerned, but with more than two thirds of the hands remaining, I wouldn't start booking my travel for the NAPT tour just yet. Have you seen what they charge for change fees? <laughs> Action will start on Daniel Negrano. No, no, no. We agreed to it. Folds. Did agree to it. Yeah, I guess Fifford doesn't lie like that, right? Seaver's out. Tony raises to 1,500. I had seven, eight of clubs. Viffer finally admitting what he had in that big hand against Bobby Sura. Couple of eights for the cannon. 1,500. Yes, Calls. Bobby Sura. 7-5 off and kicks it in. Tony G may be seeking revenge for Cannon floating him on that last hand. These two are a coin flip if we see all five cards. You like that. Heads up to the flop, 6-10-7. Cannon has a gut shot in his pair and he checks it. Tony checks. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Not a very scary board for two eights, especially with straight outs. Cannon bets 2,000. And Tony calls. No, no, no. Now it's Tony floating the cannon with Ace Jack. Deuce on the river. He can't make hands like the cannon. I am a fan. You got it all figured out. Betting 4,000. Got to give the cannon credit for being confident enough to attempt thinnish value on the river. And again, Gonzo's got the pro in a spot where he really can't do much. But Tony is right too. All right. I believe you somehow. Wins again. I hope you bluffed it. Choose anyone. <laughs> and Tony folds. Bottom one, bottom one. More free information. Yeah, but which eight did he show? <laughs> Starting to question who the professionals are here. But <laughs> <laughs> you can see this, you can it's see that. Look easy. Two in a row for the cannon. Kill pot. Um, well, he is literally a born cannon. <laughs> He's killing us. 
<laughs> Cannon the Cannon continues to fire shot after shot across the bow. See if the pros can eventually retaliate after this. Welcome back. Do you want a chance to be a loose cannon and win that NAPT passport? Log on to PokerStars.net. There are free qualifying tournaments every day. Now let's get back to the action. Remember, there's behind the scenes footage, bonus hands and stats, as well as moments deemed too hot for TV on the website. After 46 hands, our loose cannon is setting a nice pace for that NAPT passport. So I guess we'll be seeing you after you win the NAPT passport. Yes. Like, seems like a lock right now. You're probably going to end up around 400,000, is my guess. Now that, you know what? Now that would be a nice would payday. That, 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 that would be acceptable. With $400,000, you could buy a couple of houses, maybe even put a hotel on Park Place. Yeah, well, he's certainly railroading these guys as the action continues with hand number 48, and it's on Gonzo. Four deuce. Kicks it in. Sura folds. King 10 off for Daniel. I don't know what day of the week it is. Them's raisin chips, 1,200. King Jack, slightly better king for Seaver. Despite Daniel's dangerously pretty looks, Seaver's got him in jail. And just calls. Have you been watching? Tony folds up to Viffer. Wow. Yeah. I would never fold this hand, but the new and improved Daniel? Folds. The new Daniel. There's a new version. 3.0. Yeah. <laughs> just wait till I lose a pot, okay? Daniel 3.0 is crabby. Queen Jack 7 on the flop. Daniel's open ended. Seaver with a pair. Expect some action. Daniel gearing up for a semi bluff. Makes it 2,000. Seaver's definitely not folding. But he'll just call. Daniel seems nonplussed. And we'll see a turn card. Ace of Diamonds gives Daniel Broadway. Daniel 3.0 knows how to draw. Daniel also knows that this ace would typically be a good card to bluff at, so we may see a bet here. Daniel makes it 6,200. Daniel may get some action out of Seaver since he picked up some outs to a straight to go with his pair. We know Scott's almost drawing dead. In fact, he cannot win the pot outright. Seaver calls. Daniel's got to love that while he's got the nuts. To the river. Ten of diamonds, not anymore, and Seaver's been saved here. Diamonds hit, but they both have the nuts straight. Daniel checks. Daniel's checking, hoping Scott will bet at it. It's hard for Daniel to get called by a worse hand. He doesn't want to get raised with that flush coming in. Seaver bets 16,200. Daniel probably can't raise. And Daniel calls. They're going to chop it up. Everyone gets their money back. Except for Tony G and Viffer. They don't get their blinds back. <laughs> Had you for a minute. Yeah. Hard to hold off Scott Seaver. Yeah, King Jack. I'm getting at least half. Off, Did he say King Jack or King Jack? Joe, as far as Daniel goes, he's just not mixing it up the way he usually does. Daniel 3.0 has only seen 19% of flops, which is quite low for him. But upon closer inspection, it's probably a direct result of having the three maniacs of Seaver, G, and Viffer to his left. On the other hand, while Tony G is seeing nearly half the flops, he's not paying huge dividends to this point. So through 48 hands, Daniel 3.0 is up 25K, while original Tony is up just 10,000. <laughs> Action starts on former NBA player Bobby Sura. Deuce nine, no chance he plays it, folds. Negrano's out. Seaver, seven three, folds. Tony G, jack eight of diamonds, raises. Fuck, I might get a new card in the middle of the hand with him. Viffer in the cannon called the 1200. Tony G's in the worst shape, mind. dominated headed into the flop. Nine, 10, seven, Tony G's made a straight. Tony G flops the nuts with a redraw to the super nuts, AKA straight flush. Viffer checks, cannon checks, and Tony bets out 2000. Pretty small bet, wants a lot of action with a hand this strong. Viffer's in, cannon out. Wise fold from the cannon, Viffer also with a straight draw. Five of spades on the turn, Tony's still best. And Viffer checks. 5,000 from the G. Is your card? These two have been known to do that on the big game, but not this time, Viff. Viffer's open-ended, but at best he's drawing to a chop. Folds. 
and Tony's going to drag the pot. That's a straight flush draw. <laughs> a jack of diamonds. That's unreal. 